Hey everyone, it's Sevi. For my second Dendro character guide, I'm shining the spotlight on the often dismissed Traveler, and I'm going out on a limb to say that they are the best version of Traveler and the best Dendro support as of now. You can't say that it's because we don't have many other options for Dendro units yet, which is somewhat true. We still have a very limited Dendro roster, making the Dendro Traveler very valuable for the meantime while being totally free. However, looking at their kit itself, it's actually very solid for what they're worth, and versatile enough to serve as a core member for most new Dendro teams. And hopefully, this will encourage you to build your Traveler if you haven't yet. Let's get into it! Dendro Traveler's kit is focused on being an off-field Dendro support, dealing Dendro damage and applying Dendro onto enemies. If you want them to really do damage, that will require a higher DPS build investment, but the beauty of Dendro MC is that they can be very low investment but high value to build. Again, personal damage is a secondary priority, as their more important function is enabling all these new reactions for their teammates and new Dendro teams to flourish. Their kit is very straightforward with interesting tricks built into it. Their normal and charged attack talents are there, but they deal very low physical damage and as a quick swap unit, Traveler will barely use it. Their elemental skill fires off a spray of Dendro damage. It generates two or three particles upon hit, so the particle generation rate is somewhat low, which largely influences their energy needs. The skill has an 8 second cooldown and it should be used twice or thrice every rotation to help you generate Dendro particles to battery Dendro members and maintain the Dendro application. The MC's burst is where their support utility mainly comes from. They put down this lotus lamp, and the interesting thing about it is that it adapts to four different forms based on elements it comes into contact with. The first state is when it doesn't absorb anything. Here, it deals a total of 9 ticks of dendro damage in an AoE. Note that its dendro application follows a standard ICD of 3 hits or 2.5 seconds. But if it absorbs Hydro, Electro, or Pyro, it will transfigure and take on one of the special elemental properties. Absorbing Hydro increases the AoE of the lamp's damage ticks, which is especially helpful for Bloom, Burgeon, and Hyper Bloom teams. The larger area can help with triggering more blooms and generating more Dendro cores, meaning potentially more Dendro damage explosions. Absorbing Electro increases the attack speed of the lamp, which now totals to 14 or 15 damage ticks. At this state, it still follows standard ICD for Dendro application and still gives the same amount of Dendro application as its prior transfigurations. Lastly, absorbing Pyro makes the lamp explode to deal huge Dendro damage. It has a much larger multiplier, so it's mainly for dealing nuke damage. But be wary, if you're concerned about consistent Dendro application, accidentally triggering this early in the duration wastes the burst's utility. The lamp can only undergo one transfiguration and it stays that way until it expires. So as long as it absorbed the element you wanted, don't worry about other elements coming into contact with it anymore. The burst also snapshots. To ensure that it absorbs the right element, use the desired elemental ability right after placing down the lamp. For example, in this scenario, I put down Traveler's Burst first, then Kokomi's skill, thereby making it absorb Hydro right away. I can also do this vice versa. So the biggest concern of this is its high AD energy cost, pointing to the importance of building energy recharge on Dendro Traveler, which I'll discuss in the build section. Finally, we have their two passive talents. For the A1 passive, every second the lamp is on the field, it accumulates a stack of overflowing lotus light which buffs the active character in the lamp's AoE. Each stack accumulates 6 EM and there is a limit of 10 stacks, totaling a maximum of 60 EM. Note as well that this doesn't reset per character. It's a long wind up time but it does help a bit for more reaction damage. And their A4 passive converts EM into a damage bonus for both the skill and burst. Very helpful so that both attack and EM stats are put to good use. For talent priority, their burst is the highest priority, then follow it with a skill. Then you can ignore the normal attack talent and spend your resources elsewhere. But thankfully, you can already start taking advantage of their kit's dendro application even with underleveled talents and just work on leveling them up as you go along. Dendro MC is already very competent at C0, but thankfully constellations are free and will be unlocked over time, so that's a huge win. Let's see what we'll eventually get. C1 regenerates a flat 3.5 energy for the Traveler when the skill hits. Assuming you can get in at least 2 skill procs per rotation, you get 7 energy. It's a small help, but they'll still need ample ER for smooth rotations. 
C2 increases the lamp's duration by 3 seconds, a very useful constellation that enhances the main part of their support kit. C3 increases skill level for more damage. C4 makes it so that absorbing an element with her burst automatically grants it 5 stacks of the A1 Lotus Light buff. However, the cap is still at 60, but this helps reduce that long wind-up time to get the full EM buff. C5 increases burst level for more damage. Finally, C6 gives a 12% dendro damage increase to a character affected by the Lotus Light buff. Additionally, if the lamp already absorbed an element, it will grant the damage bonus of the element that was absorbed. So if the lamp absorbed Electro, the character also gets a 12% Electro damage bonus. And if I'm understanding this correctly, the damage bonus might be snapshotable by certain units like Fischl or Beidou. It's a particularly decent boost if you're using an aggravate or spread team, as those reactions scale with damage multipliers. Now let's discuss how to build our Dendro Traveler, starting with artifact sets. If you're not yet a high enough AR to be farming artifacts, don't worry too much about artifact sets and instead focus on getting the right stats, which we'll discuss a bit later. The top recommendation is the 4-piece Deepwood Memories. This set is one of the very few ways to reduce enemies' dendro resistance at the moment. Whether Traveler supports a dendro DPS like Tignari or is the solo dendro in a Bloom-based team, this is the best all-around set for increasing team DPS in Bloom, Burgeon, Hyper Bloom, and Spread teams. Another support set option is the 4-piece Noblesse. However, this set better complements aggravate teams where the damage is primarily coming from your Electro units. At least this set can be strongboxed. One more potential support set is the 4-piece Instructor set. Though it has a lower stat ceiling due to being a 4-star set, meaning lower damage for the Traveler, this set can still be situationally good depending on how well the team can maximize the set's 4-piece EM buff. For building personal damage, you can also look into the new Gilded Dream set, which you'll get alongside farming the Deepwood Memories. This set is strictly only recommended for Traveler if someone else is already holding Deepwood Memories, but that will be very rare since in almost all cases of having two Dendro units, you'd rather just put the Deepwood set on the Traveler instead. While you're farming for the 4-piece sets, you can use combinations of 2-piece Deepwood, 2-piece Attack% Percent, 2-piece EM, or 2-piece ER. However, for maximum support utility, you want to complete the full sets. Aside from Traveler's ER requirements, Traveler's Artifact main stats are relatively flexible. The higher priority is really getting the 4-piece Deepwood set bonus, even if you're using 4-star pieces, in order to shred that Dendro resistance. The circlet can be crit, attack, or EM. For the goblet, dendro damage is preferred, but EM or attack can also temporarily suffice. Then, for the sands, I highly recommend using an ER sands. Because of the 80 burst cost, your ER stat goes up pretty high. You can go for an attack or EM sands as well, but only if you can meet their ER needs for a smooth team rotation. A general ER target would be at least 200%. If Traveler is the only Dendro on the team, it's no surprise they need a high ER since their main battery is themselves. This can be reduced by putting on a Favonius user in your team, which could be the Traveler. Another Dendro teammate also helps with the ER needs. For substats, Traveler will want crit, attack, EM, and ER especially if they still need more ER stats. In summary, focus on the ER requirement first, then set bonus, then main stats, and just farm better substat artifacts as you go along. Moving on with the weapons, Traveler's most recommended builds are about ensuring burst uptime and addressing their ER needs, so our priority weapon choices will be those with an ER substat. Of course, the Favonius Sword tops this list. It's a 4-star weapon and overall best in slot for addressing energy needs and batterying the team with its particle generation. An alternative is the Sacrificial Sword, though it is inferior to Favonius due to the lower team battery utility and extending rotations, and the passive won't be felt much at early refinements. Still, it at least has the same ER substat as Fav. Next is the new craftable Sapwood Blade, which is a good free-to-play alternative. It also generates this leaf, which can be picked up by a party member for an EM buff. Your only 5-star ER option is the Skyward Blade, which can give you the highest personal damage for the ER weapon options, though 4-star options can do just as well for a support build. Your last resort weapons are the Festering Desire, though this is a relatively old event weapon and newer players won't have it, and the 3-star Skyrider Sword for the cheapest ER sword. For our other batch of weapon options, there are some non-ER weapons 
happens. But keep in mind that these should only be considered if the traveler's energy needs can be fully secured without the use of an ER weapon, which is hard but still possible. If you already have the Aminoma Kagiyuchi, you can use this. Despite being an attack weapon, the energy refunding mechanic will help a lot. The Iron Sting is a decent free-to-play option, and if you've already built one, you can put it to use. There's the very cheap 3-star Dark Iron Sword which gives EM and an attack buff. It is a worse option than Iron Sting, but at least it's completely free. The Alley Flash is a serviceable weapon, providing high attack and low EM. Just ensure that they won't be damaged as much as possible. An interesting option is the Lion's Roar due to the passive's damage bonus on Electro-affected enemies, but this is only usable on a quickened team since the Electro Aura stays on the enemy. Lastly, the premium option is the Freedom Sworn, and it's the best 5-star weapon for increasing team damage. I'm sure that some will also try to build Dendro MC with weapons like Mist Splitter or Jade Cutter to make them as much of a main DPS as possible, and that's perfectly fine if that's your thing. Again, whatever you want to build them with, just make sure their ER needs are addressed. When it comes to team comps, due to how flexible and valuable Traveler is as a Dendro support, they can serve as a core member of most new Dendro teams. You can refer to my Dendro team showcase linked below for a general overview and longer explanation of new possible teams. But the templates that Traveler works great for are a Bloom team, which consists of Dendro MC plus a Hydro unit, then two flex slots, which can be a mix of Hydro, Dendro, or Animo. You can also turn a Bloom team into a Fridge team by adding a Cryo unit. This is basically like Bloom, but with freezing capabilities. Bloom has two sub-reaction variations. The first is a Burgeon team, with Dendro MC, a Hydro unit, Pyro, and a Flex slot. An EM Toma or Sinian build are good candidates for this team. Hyperbloom is the other sub-reaction, and a Hyperbloom team would consist of Dendro MC, a Hydro, an Electro that can trigger the Dendro cores, and a Flex slot. Traveler is also great in a Quicken team that leads to aggravate and spread reactions where Electro units will generally perform well in. This is also the best team format for Dendro MC to support Tignari. Or you can do a soup team where you just throw in Dendro, Hydro, Electro, and Pyro or Animo to get in a cocktail mix of reactions. When inserting Dendro Traveler into your rotations, you again just want to keep in mind what element will come into contact with their burst first. For example, in a Burgeon team, you should get the Hydro Transfiguration before using your Pyro teammate to avoid Traveler's burst ending prematurely. As we get to work more with Dendro, I'm optimistic we'll be able to find more synergies between particular characters, so I definitely encourage you to try out different comps with these templates. For the most part, Traveler's team synergy is very plug and play. I'm personally very happy that Dendro Traveler's kit allows them to be an almost universal unit for anyone looking to explore Dendro reactions and teams. Anyway, that's going to be all for this video. Let me know in the comments what you think about Dendro Traveler and which team comps you're enjoying so far. I'm happy to give my Lumine some sunlight while she explores the vast mysteries of Sumeru. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care!